Hey everybody, it's Eric here with GMFlash.com. Today we're going to do something a little different. Um, we're actually going to do a little Ford programming. Uh, this video is more of an instructional video on how to replace a rewrite event in a computer that you no longer have access to. Um, you got to kind of follow these procedures uh, in order to rewrite event if the original is missing or if the original no longer communicates. Uh, a lot of people find that um, you'll put the com you'll put a replacement computer in, and it's keeping the same event of the original computer, uh, or the replacement computer. And this kind of stemmed from a shop locally. They can do programming and got stuck, <coughs> and basically wanted to answer how to do it because they didn't want to pay me to come do it. So there's not really a lot of information out there on the internet, so I thought I'd make a quick quick video here on how to do this. So <coughs> I've been playing around with uh, this computer on the bench here. Um, here's I got the Solus in the back, so this is the, the VIN, I don't know if you can read it, but this is the VIN off the, the computer that we're working with right now. I also have that VIN right here, so the VIN is 1659, or the ends in 1659, this is the original 2003 Ford Ranger. Um, this is the EEC style computer, uh, the, I guess it's like up to 2004, uh, 2005 they went to a different style computer, but up to like 2004 this is in most uh, Ford cars and trucks. So that being said, this is the original. This is what we're going to change to. I just went on the internet and got a, a generic VIN. I was able to find a door tag too so I could figure out some of the other things we're going to have to program. So we're going to change it over to this 9069 VIN. So uh, you launch your Ford, uh, Ford uh, what do they call it now, J or FJDS um, reprogramming um, tool. You get that all logged in. You get yourself a description, which now seems to be like a big pain. Um, Anyway, once you get all logged in, uh, obviously here we have an open session was found. I want to resume. Do not want to resume that session. Be scared to see what the I named some of those sessions too. I kind of get a little crazy with the naming. Okay, so we're going to uh, start by ignoring this. Start a new session. Whoops. Start a new session. All right, so here's gonna tell you to switch the ignition on. So you're not gonna be able to do that at this point. So basically, let's take the uh, example that we're gonna be replacing a, a controller that's completely dead, so we can't pull any information off that controller. So you wanna keep the car off, try to communicate with it. It's gonna take a couple seconds here, go through it's uh, uh, trying to communicate with the PCM. If you did have the car on, what it's gonna do, it's gonna pull the VIN off of that uh, ECM and kind of get stuck in the system. So this is where you want to avoid turning on the ignition. So we'll give this uh, just a couple seconds here. I'll probably fast forward through this uh, when we go into editing, but uh, it's gonna, we're gonna have to do this a couple times here. And usually when it gets to the end of this 45 seconds, it usually kind of hangs for a second too, usually. There's that hanging I was talking about, but it doesn't last too long. All right, no communication be established to the PCM. Switch ignition on. Again, we're not going to switch ignition on. We're just going to say yes. Would you like to retry? I'm going to say no. Switch the ignition on, which we're not going to do. Switch the ignition off, which we have none. Switch the ignition on. We're going to just say yes to all the stuff and we're not going to do it. I absolutely hate Ford programming, by the way. All right, the diagnostic tester is unable to communicate with this vehicle. You will be prompted to select a vehicle from the list. All right, so here's going to be this big list. Come down here to Ranger. It's going to ask for diesel. We're not working on diesel, so we're going to go to all other. All right, the, to enable the diagnostic section that is by the PCM, please enter one of the following in the next screen. So we're gonna do the PCM part number. So PCM part number, right here, 2L5A, and then CE goes on the other side, and that's what we're gonna go with. All right, it is a 2003 Ford Ranger Danger. Correct. 
Is this correct? Sure is. We'll just say yes. All right, the VIN number. Here's the fun part. Now I gotta read this off. One FTY R forty four V seven three P B zero nine O six nine. And our O number doesn't really matter. We'll just say YouTube. Mileage I doesn't really matter because I believe it's all stored in the cluster, but let's go uh, 19 miles. I'm sure the same VIN was probably session. Do you wish to abort and restore that session? I do not. All right, so now it's loaded. We're going to check our VIN. So this is what we're changing it to. This uh, B09069, B09069 looks good. So we come up here to our toolbox, module programming. And then once you get in here, this will list all the modules. So there's two different module, or module reprogramming and module program module installation. You're gonna come to program module installation. And while we're here, I'll show you uh, programmable parameters. These are some things you can you know go back and change or if you're doing something on a vehicle requires the use of that. There it is right there. So anyway, these are all the vehicles or modules in the vehicle that you can program. We're gonna to go to PCM. It's gathering the data. All right, so the ignition is currently off on our bench program right here. Install a new module in the vehicle. And then uh, yeah, this is going to give you some notes. We obviously are not programming a 604, so it doesn't matter. Is this vehicle equipped with the PATS? Yes, it is. Absolutely hate the Ford PATS design. All right, so we're going to switch the ignition on our bench programmer. And here it is going to go into programming. And this will take uh, just a couple seconds. It's actually pretty freaking quick. So why it's programming, one thing you are going to need to know, uh, especially you can get a lot of the information from the door tag, the axle ratio, tire size, um, sometimes engine size, and I believe uh, obviously if it's rear wheel drive, four wheel drive, obviously for this application it's a truck. Um, it's been a long time since I've done a car one. Uh, it seems like it's only the truck computers that I've had to. Um, so I can't remember uh, if... Uh, they ask things that are different or if it's just generically through four or generic uh, same questions all across the board. Um, I may uh, do a follow-up video and flash a, a Windstar computer I have laying here at the house and uh, see what kind of options we get when we do that. But if you have access, if you know, obviously use that uh, door tag. Uh, door tag should give you pretty much everything you need to know about the vehicle. in the home stretch here. These four computers don't, especially the EEC computers don't have a, uh, I guess, very much memory. Um, so they flash pretty freaking quickly. This is way more difficult than GM program, by the way. Uh, GM programming is so much easier. All right, and as soon as it gets to the end here, it's probably going to ask us to uh, turn the uh, ignition off. Switch the ignition off. Click OK. Switch the ignition back on. Click OK. It's going to say the calibration has been checked and loaded, or it should, I believe. All right, so this module requires some configuration settings. Um, a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo. But highly suggest that you read it. Well, for the sake of this video or not. Okay, so here's what we got. Axle ratio. So this particular vehicle is equipped with an 86 option code axle, which I believe on the pot using the power of the internet is a 373 axle. Is it manual shift on the fly? No, because it's two-wheel drive. 
tire size, the tire size is 225 70 15. So 225 70 15. And low range for the four wheel drive? Of course not, because it's two wheel drive. So we'll select the appropriate option. Now switch the ignition switch to off. Now switch the ignition to on. Switch the ignition to off. Switch the ignition to on. Calibration has been loaded and checked. Or calibration. Help if I could talk. Switch the ignition to off. Calibration has been loaded and checked. If you program a 60 diesel, which we do not, please reinstall the Fickham relay. Not applicable for us. Okay, so for anybody that's doing this, you probably want to definitely update the uh, part uh, right on the ECM that this has been reflashed. Um, a reprogramming label is not required on vehicle service in North America, but anyway, I would probably update this and put this uh, on the uh, computer itself um, in case anybody goes later will actually know what calibration is loaded in it. So we'll say okay, we'll turn it back on, and that's probably going to ask us for PATS next. Okay, so Ford computers have a thing called PATS, requires two good programmable ignition keys. Do not do not suggest, or I do not suggest the uh, 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 mobile locksmith key cut deal. I couldn't tell you how many times I've gone to do a mobile program and the locksmith has had a key that doesn't work. It is the biggest pest peeve I have. Just go to the dealer, they're super cheap. Um, buy them brand new or buy them somewhere that carries you know, Ford keys. There's lots of different distributors out there. But get a good Ford OEM key. Like, I cannot stress it enough. Obviously it's gotta be cut to the vehicle, but if you're missing a key, you will not be able to complete this procedure. Now there is a manual procedure also. So if you buy a computer from us or have us flash one, you'll get the instructions on how to do the manual procedure. It's a little stupid, unlike the GM stuff, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but you know, obviously if you have us program one, it comes with instructions for the, the manual way to do it. Um, but anyway, once you get to this point, you will have to have two keys. So before you even start this whole procedure, make sure you have two good Ford keys. Now you can also access this uh, reprogramming thing from the toolbox or getting security access from the toolbox. Also, almost 90% of the, a good quality scan tool out there, um, the Snap-on, the Altel, um, to name a couple of the big ones, they both have uh, uh, where you can reprogram Ford keys. I know a lot of people that, uh, before I started getting into this, I, I knew shops or one of my friends, was a, his dad was a GM mechanic and his son was a big Ford guy who's a good friend of mine. And he was under the uh, impression that only the Ford dealer could do it, like no scan tool could do it. But all the scan tools pretty much support, uh, any good scan, high quality scan tool will support relearning the keys. So unfortunately here we don't have a vehicle to uh, relearn the keys on so we're gonna skip this step. But it's, there's a 10 minute lockout once you, uh, once you hit yes, 10 minute lockout, you'll go in, you'll have to clear your keys. So once you get into security access, uh, you go to clear your keys, clear the keys out, and then you'll go to learn two new keys. Uh, what you do is you put the key in the ignition, uh, turn it to run. You wait three to five seconds, I believe, turn it off, put the second key in, turn that on for three to five seconds. Then you take that out, turn the original key back in the ignition for three to five seconds, and you can start the vehicle. Total stupid process. Absolutely hate it, but that's Ford system. So we're not gonna continue with this. We're gonna say no. We're gonna switch the ignition to off. And then programming was successful. Switch the ignition on. Now it's gonna go through clearing all the fault codes. So this will take a couple seconds and uh, we might cut this out and come back here in a minute. All right, we're going to set the ignition to off. All right, so the module has been completely reprogrammed. So unfortunately, there's really good, no good way here to pull up the bin. Um, 
or an easy way to pull up the VIN. So what I'm going to do is uh, stop the video. I'm going to hook up to the scan tool. Then I'm going to refresh the scan tool. So give me just one second. We'll be right back. All right, everybody. So we're back here to our scan tool. I hopefully you can see this. I kind of had to manually focus this. So we're going to forward and scan tool. We have the power onto the computer. It's going to do the automatic ID. And the new VIN, B09069. So B09069, the last few digits of it. That is our uh, new replacement VIN number. Uh, the original was uh, the last four were 1659, so it was successful in programming that over. And uh, here's the uh, anti theft theft pads thing I was talking about. So you'll have like a special function here. Pads help module ID. Let's see functional test. So select spare key programming to add to or add a key using two already program keys for other pads functions. Select security access to gain access. So this would be here, security access, and then maximum number of keys, eight, minimum key required after ignition key erases, two, requires primer reset after installed new PCM or pads, no, key graphic number one stamped on blade. Uh, I don't think the blade part matters, but, or the, the stamping matters, because I've never followed that procedure. I just throw a key in, just to make sure this is one, or this is two, or whatever. Um, but anyway, if you go from here on this particular scan tool, be a 10 minute lockout and like I said it'll have all your options for uh, erasing keys and adding keys. So with that being said, like I said before, you need two keys and uh, that's pretty much it to the uh, Ford Venry right without a good computer. Now also when it went to ask for configurable uh, those things for four wheel drive and two wheel drive and stuff like that, if you have a good computer um, that you can still use. What you can do is when you turn the key off, put the original one back in. Usually, will ask to, or usually it prompt you to do that, and then you can copy the data off that, throw it back, throw the original back in, or hook the original, or hook the replacement back up that you re just reprogrammed, and it will add those stuff to that, add those things to it. So, depending on your application, it may may ask you that. But on that, this is a quick uh, quick uh, how to on how to rewrite a VIN in a Ford computer. This is for the EEC style, uh, older style Ford computers up to like nine or 2004. Um, hopefully this helps you. Not gonna be a real good person to ask questions on this stuff, but there really wasn't a lot of information out there on the internet, so I thought I would uh, at least put something out there for somebody that might be uh, trying to figure this out. And if this helps you, like and subscribe. And always, um, thanks for watching.